Hey, I'm Sasha. Today we're talking pizza, something I feel super strongly about. I grew up in Italy, so I kind of have a lot of opinions about pizza. Today we're making pan pizza. So that's pizza that we make in a cast iron pan. We're filming. What's great about this recipe, you don't need a wood burning pizza oven. You don't need a bunch of fancy equipment. You don't need a stand mixer. All you need is a functioning oven, a few bowls and two cast iron pans. So before I eat all the pizza that we have right here, let's get to it and make some pizza. All right, so we're gonna start with the most important part of the whole recipe, making the dough for the pizza. Super simple, this one, it's using a no-need method. Basically, you just get everything into one bowl, stir it together, cover it in plastic wrap, set it aside overnight. If you're like serious about making doughs, breads, whatever, it's good to have two types of scales. I like having a large scale and then having one of these small jeweler scales. You can buy these online and also in head shops <laughs> is a, a good place to get them. Tell them it's just for making pizza and they'll be like, sure, definitely for making pizza. 400 grams of bread flour, four grams, this is instant yeast. 10 grams of kosher salt. So for this recipe, everything goes in at the same time. 275 grams of water. Yeah, the sound is uh, suggestive. Eight grams of extra virgin olive oil. So once you have everything measured out, all that's left to do is mix it together. I like to have a plastic pastry card with me for this so that as I'm going, I can scrape off my wooden spoon to make sure that I'm not just stirring this one piece of sort of wet dough on my spoon and I'm actually incorporating everything that's in the bowl. As you can see, we're sort of got everything into like a wet shaggy dough and that's pretty much what we're looking for. All you have to do is cover this bowl with plastic wrap super tight and set it aside at room temperature overnight. So we have our dough that's rested overnight and we're now ready to get it out onto the counter and then just Use a pastry card or scraper to get the dough out onto the works. Now all we have to do is sort of form it into a cohesive piece of dough and then just divide it into two pieces using a bench scraper. And from there, it's just uh, balling the dough up into rounds. Get it into one piece and sort of tuck it under with your thighs of your hands and it'll come together and sort of naturally form an elastic smooth top. As you'll see on the underside of it, you've got this sort of belly button type thing and you wanna minimize that. And so then I just use my fingers to pinch this sort of belly button type thing together, almost like you were pinching together dumplings or something. And as I'm doing that, also sort of flattening it out as well. This will eventually be the bottom crust of your pizza. And the more you have it uniform and flat, the better crust you'll get on the bottom of it. We have two 10 inch cast iron pans and we drizzle in one to two tablespoons of olive oil. I'll start with the sort of presentation top side first, sort of get some oil on it, rub it around and then flip it over. Then you just have your nice and uh, oiled up hand. This is just like what I look like when I run my hand through my hair. And with the flat side of my palm, just sort of press down on it. This is just about giving it sort of an even flat surface for it to proof evenly. If you just proofed it as a ball as is, you'd get like one giant domed piece of pizza. All we have to do is cover both pans with plastic wrap and let them rise for two hours at room temperature. So it's been two hours. Our dough is rested in the pans and we're ready to finally bake off some pizzas. The doughs have risen a little bit. Um, they're not quite to the edges of the pan, but 
it'll just take a couple seconds to push them out. Any giant air bubbles, just give them a little pop. And I've actually never had uh, American style pan pizza before, but you can see a lot of similarities between this American style pan pizza and an Italian focaccia minus all the sauce and stuff, or pizza pugliese or focaccia pugliese that have this sort of technique of cooking it in a cast iron pan with tons of oil underneath. The Pizza Hut uh, you know, origin story is a pan pizza maybe started in Puglia. What is a hut in Italian? Hut? Pizza. La, la capanna di pizza. <laughs> yeah, sure, Pizza Hut. <laughs> As we stretched them out, there's a good chance there's an air pocket underneath and the dough, and you just want to release that. All you have to do is simply lift up one edge of the dough, like so. And so now the best part of any pizza party is sort of having your topping set up and topping the pizzas before you bake them up. But normally for pizzas, you would say, oh, like treat it like pasta or something, you lightly dress it, you're not slathering on tons of toppings. This pizza is different. This one, you actually want to weigh it down with a lot of toppings, especially when it comes to tomato sauce. It needs almost that sauce to sort of soak into the dough. So you need three quarters of a cup of sauce per pie. And then using the back of a spoon, you're just gonna spread it out all the way to the edge. Don't worry about having a rim, a cornicione of like undressed, uh, pizza dough, that's not really what we're going for here. It's a lot of sauce, kind of like makes me a little nervous having that much sauce, but it'll be great. A good amount of cheese, go hard with it. And then, you know, whatever you want to do, let's try some of this pepperoni, see what the deal is. Basil, don't try and be too perfect with it. A drizzle of olive oil on top, even though you've got Salty cheese, salty pepperoni, whatever you need. A final like sprinkling of salt. What does the pizza say when it wants to cuddle? I don't even know. Hold me close. Oh. What type of person doesn't love pizza? A terrible person, not worth knowing. A Any... weirdo. <laughs> a weirdo. Yeah. So we're going into a 550 degree oven. You know, crank your oven all the way up. Middle rack and they go in 12 to 15 minutes and we'll have some delicious pan pizzas ready to go. Oh yeah. Sounds pretty great in here. You can see you've sort of got this like burnt cheesy action happening on the sort of edge of the pan. So what you're gonna wanna do is sort of Loosen up with a spatula so that you can peek at the dough underneath, see how that bottom crust has come along. It's got some pretty good color on it, but it's not all the way crispy. You can pop it on a burner real quick at medium heat for a couple minutes and just rotate it around to finish crisping up that bottom crust. You don't have to do this, but we've come this far. We might as well get a super, super crispy crust on the bottom, and it really doesn't take that much time at all. Oh yeah. You can see it's kind of frying, getting all crispy and delicious. You wanna always wait a hot second before you try and cut into pizza. Otherwise, you'll have cheese slopping off everywhere and you won't have too much left on your pie itself. Final sort of finishing touch, sprinkle a little grated cheese on top. Time to slice up our pizza and let's eat. All right. Hot, pretty hot. But it's worth it. You know, kind of crispy on the bottom. You got sauce, you got salty pepperoni, cheese. There's a lot going on and a lot of dough, but I dig it. 